Want to travel solo to New York City but don't know where to start? Get ready for an action-packed and cultural experience through New York City over three videos. These are my first impressions on traveling solo to the city of almost 9 million that never sleeps. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the solo travel adventures. Good morning. I am here yet again at the airport and I'm heading on a last minute trip to New York City. I'm really excited to take you along with me. Traveling solo there is always a blast and a lot of people can be intimidated about it at first, but I'm going to show you that it can be super fun and easy to travel in New York City by yourself. But first we're going from Orlando to LaGuardia, but I'm excited to bring you along with me. Let's go. hotel but first I'm in Grand Central Station so I cannot not stop by and see the famous Grand Central Station concourse area oh this is so cool I love New York City every time I come back here it is super epic so five minute walk now to get to the hotel but that was much easier than I thought because it was going to be like a $50 Uber. But then I looked and saw that I could take this like free bus called the 70 or something. It was easy to find the public transit signs. And then once I found that, it brought me straight to the Roosevelt stop where you could take the 7 into Manhattan. And now that's where I am now. Already time to get checked into the Westgate New York City Grand Central. It's located right here. But actually really close by to this historic building. Definitely cool. I think it was one of the first apartment complexes in all of New York City. I love how you have the old history mixed right beneath the new. Good afternoon. I just checked into the West Gate resort here in New York City. It's called the Westgate New York City Grand Central and I'm really excited to show you my room. I got the Queen Lux Suite and it is on the 19th floor so we are high up in New York City but as you walk in I really love this. They just did like a renovation. You can really see it. It's very light and airy in here and as you walk in you have the bathroom. I love the floor like mirror they have and then also this is so well lit, especially when you're getting ready to go out in the city. And yes, we have a bidet. <laughs> oh my gosh, a bidet. I'm not really used that much. And yeah, so I am excited. I'm here for Women's Travel Fest and seeing a bit of the city. I've been to New York before and I always love coming here. Each trip is different than the last. And I'm really excited because I've stayed at Westgate properties a lot throughout my life. I used to go down when I lived in Massachusetts to Orlando and I stayed at the Westgate Lakes Resort down there. But right now we're at Westgate, New York City and it is so nice. I love this giant queen bed we have here. And also they have nice detail with a lot of the artwork in the rooms. This was like Gustav Clint Prince and I really like that artist from Austria actually and as you can see we have a nice seating area a desk to get some work done and we have the bed but as you can see the Queen Lux suite is really nice they also have some other suites that even have balconies but those were sold out this weekend but I really love Westgate because they always have like really nice locations around the country. I had originally stayed with them in Florida when I would go there on vacation with my mom. And I've also done a staycation actually down there as well at Westgate Lakes Resort. But yeah, there's also a bar downstairs so people can have cocktails and they have a little tavern where you can buy some snacks 
as well. But I'm going to get ready because I'm actually meeting some girls in the travel community at a rooftop bar. And yeah, we're going to start our adventure in the city. I am solo traveling, but there are other solo travelers as well that are here for Women's Travel Fest. So we're having a little get together tonight. But I'm really excited to show you around some of New York City and show you what it's like to solo travel here in the big city. Good evening from Westgate, New York City, Grand Central. I just came down and the bar opened that they have down here. And not only that, there's also a little shop. So if you wanna get some snacks and things to enjoy in your room, you can get it right down here. Definitely really nice, but I'm running late. We have to go check out this rooftop and meet some of the girls from Women's Travel Fest. So guys, we are off and exploring. It is such a good day out today. I thought the weather was gonna be complete crap, but it actually turned out to be not too bad and it's really actually beautiful, like golden hour right now. Yeah, I just decided to walk because why not? It is so beautiful out right now. Okay, so just walking by Grand Central here on my right, some gravy tunes and this Central Cafe is also pretty famous as well. Maybe I'll stop in there. But yes, New York City is buzzing. The last time I came to New York City, it was still around the time of that which shall not be named. And things were closing at like 10.30. It was like so weird. So now it's definitely not the case anymore. Right over my right shoulder, you're gonna see the New York Public Library. On the other side is Bryant Park. So really, the Westgate is so close by to all of this. It's just like walking distance and feels super comfortable walking around here, honestly, by myself. So, there's that. Alrighty guys, just made it to the 235th Avenue rooftop. I'm excited to come and check it out. First rooftop bar of the trip. Alright guys, this place is so beautiful. They have these igloos here as well. So when it's more chilly, you can go and just be warm inside of those. It is definitely beautiful. This is we are we're having the first meetup. Trying to find them still, but honestly, this is so so beautiful. So all I'm gonna say is I was wrong. They changed the meeting time, and now they're meeting at the bar SEMA on top of of Hotel George, I think. So we're almost there. But yeah, I was gonna be on time, but now I'm like 35 minutes late. Ended up having such an amazing time with the girls that I didn't film much, but here is a group picture of us all. Good morning, everybody. Oh my God, I actually had such an awesome night last night. I went up to a meetup. It was at the Roof Tart Bar Sigma. Honestly, it was so awesome. I met these two other ladies from Vegas and we ended up going out to check out a, a like we got some like dumplings and stuff, super like home wall place, but it was really, really good. I didn't get much video because I was just hanging out with them and just enjoying the night. And then we went to another bar, Shea Zuzu, and they had a lot of nice cocktails and also they can make mocktails as well. I'm just really excited today to take you along with me on a day exploring New York City solo. I'm definitely gonna get more coffee. I'm making a cup of coffee here and then we can head out and find some breakfast. I'm gonna bring you around with me now and show you what a day traveling solo in New York City is like, but that's why I like the Westgate Resort, like the Westgate Resorts in the Westgate property here in New York City, because it is so, so central. Like I'm walking and right now I see right behind me or in front of me is the Chrysler building. And yeah, I was yesterday walking around and not too far from Bryant Park and a bunch of other New York City highlights. And yeah, it's just really lively, the city, and just gonna see what it's all about. Good morning, everybody. I'm here at Little Collins, and this place is super cute. It's located close to Grand Central, and not only that, they serve breakfast, which is my favorite meal of the day. And I got the breakfast burrito with chorizo, which the lady suggested is really good. And they also serve coffee. I love their cups. It says Fresh Hearts and Daisy, Little Collins. And 
they also do evening eats from like 2 to 6. So if you are in the area and you want to grab a quick bite and a coffee or a cocktail, they have that here as well. And the people are extremely nice. As soon as they came in, they let me sit down. And sometimes when you're solo, you wonder if you're taking up space if you're at a two-person table. But they were super acceptable to my request. And yeah, I'm excited. I'll let you know how it is when I start getting my burrito to eat. But it's literally like a two-minute walk from Grand Central. So if you happen to be in the area, definitely come check them out. All right, guys. So the breakfast burrito has come out. And as you can see, I can help myself. And I already had one bite of it. And it comes with this like green sauce. I don't know if it's spicy, but here we go. Mm. Oh wow. Mm. This is so good. It has such a great taste to it. With the chorizo being super a little spicy and the egg and the cheese, it all just melts together in your mouth. It's so good. All right, guys, we are here in the New York City subway. I'm about to take the 6th Uptown to head towards Central Park to 52nd Street. And now just heading for a little walk around Central Park and then getting ready for a night out again in the town and meeting up with some of the wonderful women of Women's Travel Fest. Welcome to Central Park. This is nestled right next to Upper East Side where I took the uptown route like six up here to 77th Street. And as you come here, you'll see that one of the famous museums, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, is located right here in Central Park. Central Park is honestly like massive. It's actually bigger than some countries. It covers 843 acres and for instance, even Monaco's only 500 acres. So the whole country of Monaco can fit in Central Park and still have some room to spread out. A Central Park is definitely an amazing place. Almost every time that I come to New York City, it's a place you can come, relax, walk around. And honestly, every time I see something new and it's beautiful any time of the year. Right now, it's actually not too bad. We can see in the distance the tall buildings and the skyline, but as you start getting more and more inside Central Park, it becomes quieter and quieter, and it is a space of relaxation. They created it in the 19th century so that everybody in the whole city, rich, poor, different socioeconomic and races, could all enjoy it and come together here in one place. One thing that is extremely interesting about Central Park is that it is the oldest public park in the entire U.S. It was designed by Frederick Law Olmsted, who won actually a public works contest to design Central Park. So next up is definitely a surprise, but there's a castle in Central Park, and this is one of the most iconic things to see when you're here. It is called Belvedere Castle, and it is this Victorian Gothic era style building that was built also by Frederick Olmsted and he designed this and it's definitely one of the best places to get a view and a panorama of the city before all the big towers were built because it's located on the second highest point in rock in Central Park. Alrighty, so we just saw Belvedere Castle and now we're heading towards Bow Bridge which is absolutely beautiful. I remember one of my first solo trips to New York City I came here with a, two other girls walking around the park and honestly sometimes you can feel a little bit intimidated because this is definitely a huge park but it is pretty darn safe and beautiful. Check this walk out right now. It's like nuts. Another fascinating thing about Central Park is that it's mostly all artificial. People might think that it looks super natural. There's rocks everywhere. There's undulating hills and lakes and stuff, but it was all man-made. It just, yeah, nothing really existed here before they designed it. And they built this beautiful, epic park in the middle of the city. And it's actually not even New York City's largest park. The largest park is actually located in the Bronx. 
already and we're now here at Boat Bridge which is another very picturesque spot in New York City's Central Park and definitely worth a stop by. It's on the way to the Bethesda Terrace which is also a must when you are here and you can even see the pond where they filmed the Friends intro scene. So I'm gonna go check, not pond, I mean fountain. <laughs> Already so far everybody's been so friendly. If you're traveling solo and you want somebody to take your photo, just like see if they're taking photos and then just like ask them politely if they can take one for you as well because everybody wants a good photo when they're in New York City Central Park. Another famous spot in Central Park is the Besida Fountain which is right behind me and the Besida Terrace. You might recognize it from things like Friends or Gossip Girl and it just is such great vibes. I hear them playing some live music right now and I probably can't keep it on because of copyright issues but it's beautiful so I'm gonna tape it right now. No one's stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I just wanna feel alive. It's just what I do when I'm out so try not to hold me down. Feel alive. We're gonna try this Argentinian like ribeye steak sandwich. So good. This place is so popular. But I gotta see it at the bar. So good. It's open 24 hours. Empanada mama. But I didn't get an empanada. I got this mac and cheese with ribeye steak and it's so yummy. After a quick dinner, I headed to Mr. Purple at Hotel Indigo to meet up with some girls before heading to the kickoff party at the Delano in the Lower East Side. I'm gonna be someone else. I'm gonna be myself. I'm gonna be someone else. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip. Good morning. So I just took the bus back down to the Lower East Side for the Women's Travel Fest. And there's a lot of famous places here to eat, such as Katz's Delicatessen and Russ and Daughters. Russ and Daughters has been here since 1914 and is a family owned business. You can get like other, like, I don't know, foods, but I came for the bagels. So let's go inside and check it out. All right guys, I'm outside of Russ and Daughters. It's been family owned since 1914 and I got what their most famous for, their bagels. I got the everything bagel with scallion cream cheese. So I started to eat it and it is so good. <laughs> but it's definitely like $5.99 for a bagel and cream cheese. Pretty expensive, but it is famous in an institution. Oh my god, I got cream juice all over my face, but I'm gonna enjoy this and head off to the Women's Travel Fest. It sounds cliche, but it was so empowering to be around so many amazing women in travel, and definitely I recommend going to Women's Travel Fest if you love travel as well. It's time to say goodbye to Westgate. I'm heading out. I got dressed up. I'm going to the Museum of Ice Cream, which honestly I've been looking forward to. I keep seeing it online, and it's one of those things that you're just kind of like, it's a little bit kitschy and stuff and very touristy, but honestly, sometimes those are the best experiences, especially when you're meeting up with new people. And there's some girls from the Women's Travel Fest that decided to go there. Super excited to take you along with me to see what the Museum of Ice Cream is all about. I honestly don't know what to expect. So let's go and have a fun morning. But yes, it's been an amazing stay at the Westgate. Honestly, I love all the natural light in this room, the desk. I did get some work done there, which I'm pleasantly surprised with myself. But yes, time to go because it takes some time to get around New York City. I've been using the buses, the metro, and it honestly is really easy and I have felt super safe using them. I've used it in the morning, night, you name it. Um, and you can just use your card, if you have a wireless card, to tap on and off the buses, or not off, just on the bus or on the subway so you don't have to mess with the machines at all. So that's a positive, but time to go. Back in the Lower East Side, and I'm excited because I'm going to the Museum of Ice Cream with Gabby from PAX Light. And yeah, I've always seen this online and decided to check it out. It's in the Lower East Side. 
and it's close by to the conference. So before heading to the conference for Women's Travel Fest, I'm gonna head to the Museum of Ice Cream. Faces. My name is Orange Drew All right, this is so, so cute. The Museum of Ice Cream. I don't know what I know what to expect, but this is definitely fun. You can create your ice cream persona and then go through. And uh -huh. yeah, Gabby. I'm gonna eat some ice cream. I'm glad Gabby was coming here because I don't know if I would have tried this, but I'm really excited. Yeah. Oh, what is this? My ice cream name. This is so cool. We're in the Museum of Ice Cream That's Restaurant and then to Cotton Candy World. What the heck? This is so cool. Okay, so honestly, the Museum of Ice Cream is probably something you can bring your kids to or you can come by yourself or you can come with a group of girls. This has been so fun. They have all these ice cream socks. I got the brownie chocolate and it's actually vegan. It tastes super good. But there are so many like photo op opportunities. It's just like a fun place to just come, relax, grab some ice cream. And if you're like me and recently got broken up with, then yeah, this has all the ice cream you can eat. So it's the perfect way to enjoy a day with the girls. Alright guys, this was the last room and it is so cool. It's just like a pool of sprinkles. Check it out. But it's time to head back to the Women's Travel Fest. It was an epic task in here. And now it's time to head back to meet some other awesome women in travel. After having one of the roughest months going through a breakup and my mom's open heart surgery, this was the exact therapy I needed. Coping with hardships in positive ways like travel and surrounding yourself with a community that understands you was what I needed. Going to New York City solo, but I was never alone. Be sure to subscribe to not miss seeing New York City from up above and let me know in the comments if you have any questions.